Good morning, YouTube friends and family. It is Friday, April 21st, and I am here with a garden update. I am so excited, y'all. So, if you saw my little, I didn't even show the pots and everything, but when I, my last video, or one of my last videos, I showed you, well, I told you what I planted in my front landscape, and I wanted flowers and medicinal herbs and food. And as you know, I created, if you watched me, as you know, I created a, a edible landscaping. I am JC. I do live in a homeowner's association, so you know we have little restrictions on the front yard, sometimes the backyards and things like that. But I have come up with ways to still grow food in this environment. So don't feel restricted if you are in a homeowners association. But I also wanted this year to have a lot of pollinators and cut flowers to bring all the bees to the yard. Okay. And things like that. So I am um, in here and I dropped seeds on the 6th. So here we are. 15 days later I dropped seeds on the 6th now I already had these mints from last year or yeah last year I got them out my aunt's yard so they you know they can't stay and come back every year but in this pot I also dropped the motherland okra seeds and as you can see that's I'm, I got the tablet out here because I wrote it down this year so I remember everything um, so these are the motherland okra. So they, the actually the seeds I saved from last year came back. They actually germinated. So I'm very pleased with that. In this pot, I also have, um, velvet queen sunflowers. So I'm guessing that these little ones, and I overplanted cause those were like four year old seeds. But I think those are velvet cream sunflowers. So they work. And um, and the mint. So that's what that is. And it is doing very good 15 days later. Now I do have some fertilizer with a high middle number. And I want to say that middle number is like 16, 17. It's really for flowers and orchids. But in order to get my stuff to really flower, all my flowers to really push out the flowers, which makes the fruit, I think I'm going to water that down and put a gallon on each plant early on. Not this week, but next week, because they're still too young and tender. But I really want a lot of blooms on everything. So in this, I put the bulbs in this, the Sporaxis bulbs. And as you can see, they were slow, but let me show you. You see that? That's one of them popping up right there. And right there, there's one of them popping up right there. Now that, I don't know that that's a bulb. I think that's a weed. But I put 10 of him, them in here and only two have popped up. These were the bulbs from Ollie that were 10 in a pack for $3.50. But something's gonna happen. Something's going to happen. And then over here, I put the Tigridia. None of those are coming up. I don't see a hide nor hair of a Tigridia. So I am concerned about that. Let me see. I should have had gloves on so I can kind of pilf around. Well, for one, the soil's dry. But I was trying to see if I could touch one, you know, to make sure. But I don't even see them. But I put the Tigridia in here and nothing's happening. Here's the, um, what is it, Ariella or, I have purple. I bought one purple plant and one white plant. They are all over now. You see that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if you remember last year, I got these from Hobby Lobby. They were regular $39.99, so follow me. You buy this stuff early so you could really, you know, put a show on in your yard for spring. So these were 30 or 90% off. I either paid 75 or 95 or 90% off. So they were four or six dollars. I mean, it wasn't much. 
And if you saw my short yesterday, see what I say about the blueberry bushes. Now, I haven't fertilized these this year, which I do need to. Um, but you see, I only have a few blueberries. But in that short, these were $6 blueberry plants. In that short, I showed you $30 blueberry plants that were already loaded with blueberries, which does make a difference if you spend the extra money to have a more mature and producing, proven producing plant. So over here, let me see what I put here. Some of these are giant, green giant zinnias. Let me see. Green giant zinnias, daisies, African daisies, and maybe some bachelor buttons. So that's what's in these pots. And you see, they are they are coming on up. And like in the center, I put something else. So those may be the daisies or something. But that's what my notes say. The brown pots have giant zinnias, daisies, and possibly bachelor's buttons. And then the green pot, I think I have zinnias in those too. So we'll see once it comes out for sure. So, um, and these came from Hobby Lobby Spring Sale. And yes, bless this home. And life is always good as long as you're living. You can make it better with what you do every day. Okay? Um, so these were the pink lemonade videos. This was one of my earlier videos. I ordered these from Home Depot. They were not cheap. But look, I don't have many blueberries either. But they are still here. They are still back. And that's what's up. So that's what I say. Invest in a bigger plant. But those were kind of exotic. Pink lemonade. And they're back. They'll, they'll produce. It might take three years for them to fully get around to production. So these pots. Now I forgot what I planted where. But something's not growing. Because I did. I think this is cilantro. I think. And it's, no, it's not. It's not. This is either lemon balm or dill. And it's doing nothing. So, I got to put something else there. I'm going to give it one more week and then I'll replace it with something else. These are those special marigolds that I found. Now, some of these are volunteers from last year. So, I bought the orange ones. I think the French marigolds. And they did excellent. But I also dropped some of the newer marigolds I bought which were the um, Eskimos and all of that, that I did a short on there at Walmart, the Jaguars and Eskimos. And it was one other one that I forgot the name of. It was something started with a gesture, gesture, jolly gestures. So I have mixed those in these pots to get a nice marigold show. And some of them are sprouting. And over here, that's the same thing going on over here. The larger ones are the volunteers that came back. I mean, they popping up everywhere. And I had to actually pull some. But like, the, the seeds flew around and there's one over there. So yeah, they came back real nice. There's one outside the pot. So, but I did also do the new ones. And over here, I think this is the slow boat cilantro. So it's doing pretty well. There was already a little bit of cilantro in here. I just covered that up and started fresh because it was some seed. It had already gone to seed. But now that I'm smelling, I smell lemon balm. So child, I don't know what I did out here because I don't know. I, it smells like lemon balm. So I don't know. And then here, nothing. So that's either deal or I don't know. I thought this was cilantro. But here's what I was talking about. Here's another pink lemonade. But this is my blueberry edible landscape. And we hope it does well. But here's another pink lemonade. And here's some more volunteer marigolds. So I say I'm going to try to let some of them grow. And then just relocate them if they're out of place. Because they're free marigolds. Why spend the money <laughs> if you don't have to? So then even up here. Now, this is doing pretty good. It must really like this spot. 
so it's actually loaded you know loaded up a little bit more with blueberries but these were one of the six dollar plants i got from gore's nursery and then i have my little azaleas that are coming back from the rough 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 winter i also got these from hobby lobby for four dollars and i got two of those so i just added a lot to the landscape made it look pretty I'm not going to show you the whole yard but so here because i'm looking at my list i did more day lilies so they're popping up those were bulbs i believe that were old bulbs not for sure but though i think those were old bulbs and then i also put an echinacea root that was an old one so it may not come out because it was somewhere over here and i see no evidence so but it was an old root but and those are the gladiolas that come back every year they actually come back every single year regular old dollar tree gladiolas so something is going on with my aloe it's looking a little sad it's drying up on the edges don't know what's going on when i start moving stuff around and mulching and you know doing stuff this started doing bad so i don't know but these flags are also from the spring shop so you buy stuff like that and put it up for the next year so these are lilies that i've always i've had for years and they keep coming back so once you get you a good bulb system in place that's kind of like easy easy landscape it's gonna show you when it's spring it's gonna say here i go remember me from last year that's how it does so definitely get you some bulbs planted remember where you plant them so you don't go put something else over them or digging them up but definitely get stuff like that that's going to come every year and show its face with no work so then you got another volunteer miracle i'm telling you they all over the place i pull so so many so over here in this pot see this stuff comes back every year and it's called gosh i can't think of the name right now it but it's a dollar tree seed comes back every year different spots spreads around all of that good stuff so if you don't mind that then definitely get those seeds that it looks like that on the package um but in on this pot i put zinnia seeds look like some may be coming that is a gladiola from last year and i put irises and yellow gladiolas so i see that the iris may be coming up which is that one and i put yellow gladiolas so something is coming up there's another one there's another one it's been 15 days though this one looked like it tried and it died so something's not like it's not like in this pot but i did put in um irises and yellow gladiolas in here and we see what's happening i didn't take this out it, it is something that normally comes back like a mexican heather or something that normally comes back every year but it doesn't look like it's gonna make it back this year it might say i'm done so we'll see i did go ahead and buy the sweet 100 tomato starts and i did those in these pots so i put some in this one and i put one in the middle of this one but also in this pot since it's a bigger pot i did some companion planting so the companions that i put in here let's see nasturtiums basils and a marigold so i did put one of each and as you can see the nasturtiums are coming the marigolds coming and more marigolds are coming and i think my basil seeds is the one that's not making it and another marigold because or that, that yeah that looks like a marigold 
So I think the basils are not coming to the party. They say maybe you cannot use old basil seeds. If you can, let me know in the comments below. Because that might be one of those seeds that you that just will not come, you know, will not work with old seeds. So we'll soon find out. But in this one, I planted the yellow pear tomatoes from seeds. I know I'm late, but we're going to see. This is Florida. We'll be hot until November. And then I put some more marigolds and nasturtium. So marigolds and nasturtiums and look like a yellow pear tomato might have floated over here. But those are yellow pears. So we'll see how those turn out. And then in these pots. Okay, so I did dahlias. So it's some dahlia bulbs in here. My hand is going to sleep holding this phone. So it's some dahlia bulbs in here. This was a volunteer marigold that I picked up off the ground and put in here. So it seems to be doing good. Um, some Jolly Jester marigolds I dropped in here. So those may be the ones over there. And I put Eskimo marigolds, so they may be popping up, I'm guessing. It's so early on, but let's see. And then uh, somewhere I dropped some dahlias, so I'm thinking in here, the center ones are dahlias. And then some calendulas, but let's see. So some may be over there, but... Here is the spring DIY from last year. As you can see, the bird of paradise did not do good in the winter. But it's, it's going to survive. It's going to survive. Just give it some time. And then I put some... <laughs> dahlias in here. So I'm guessing this is the dahlias. Because that's matching up. And... I put marigolds, which you see they're popping up real well, which is the jag, the Jolly Gesture, the Jaguar, and the Eskimos are in here somewhere. And um, I dropped some calendula seeds. No, 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 not in here. Yes, I did. I dropped some calendula seeds somewhere, but they may not be. I don't know if they're coming in or what. Maybe that's calendula. But I know I put some bulbs in here somewhere. My notes are not good, but I did make notes, so I know a little bit of what I'm doing. So here's the other spring DIY. So everything's coming back with this one. You got the white, the white bird of paradise. You got the, um, what was it, mandevilla. And you got that little sprig plant I put in here. And I did not... I put in a hibiscus in here too and it's it's still good it may pop on back out and then I got some marigolds in here I just added marigolds in case something doesn't come back and it looks like I added either some calendula, calendula or something but all that's from seeds 15 days ago so we still have to give it time but I think it's gonna look pretty it might take a little longer because I am late to the party. That's my bad. But oh well. But that's what I say. I plant some real stuff to hold up the front until the, you know, some stuff that comes back automatically to hold up the front until I can get out here and do what I need to do. So these came back. These are Dollar Tree seeds or either a star that came back this year. And this is some more of this stuff. And it's popping up on the ground. And it's all over the place, okay? So, if you need something that comes back, look for these. And then, my little garden garden angel. And then I have um, some calendula marigold seeds popping up. So, I'm going to get out here and water everything. This thing just magically appeared in my yard. I've cut back all of my hibiscus plants. And there's one popping back up. So we come back 
They come back. Trust the process. They come back. I almost dropped the camera. Now, this is my pineapple hibiscus. It's coming back. Okay. These are some four o'clocks. This was shampoo ginger. Four o'clock snuck in. And the four o'clock is here for the party. So we'll just leave it. It's in, the, in here. I don't know if the shampoo ginger is still down there. If it'll ever come back. But that's what I got for now. So I'll take it on its own. And. So. Um, somebody was out here helping me pull weeds. The name cameraman. And I think he pulled up my hibiscus. But you know what? That looked like it coming back to me. I hope so. I hope that's it, so I'm not going to mess with that. And I hope that's the hibiscus coming back. But it looks like he pulled most of the, because it was more of the it left than that. But, oh well. But we're going to pray that that's the pineapple hibiscus coming back. And then in this pot, I did okra. So we got two more motherland okras. I put three seeds in each pot. So that's six seeds and five of them sprouted up. So that's a good thing. Now, where the marigolds I put in here, I don't know. So I will drop some more marigold seeds in here since they didn't come up. And then more mint, the free mint. That never goes away. That's why you want to put it in a pot so it ain't everywhere. In your grass, in your yard, everywhere. So that's where we're at right now this is the front and I will show you the trees I have done nothing in the back I am behind schedule remember I got hit by a Cisco truck and I got other stuff going on that's going to be a series so I got to be careful because I'm in here in flip flops and it's ant beds all over this yard so here's what happened to my lemon tree over the winter even the tree in the back but I cut it down. It was more of this. I cut it down. I'm going to actually prune this back a little more and get all of the disease off and see if I can still get a tree off of this. But it's not looking too promising. Yet, the orange tree did fine. And actually, even though it's going to most likely drop this fruit, actually, we have two little oranges on there. Actually, three little oranges. It's going to drop that fruit because it's still so young, but that's fine. And oh, my persimmon, oh, my persimmon that, that I am allergic to, but I can eat one or two, but not all of them. Full of fruit yet again. So I'm starting to think my source for fruit trees is going to be Eat Your Yard now because they are doing better. I mean, the ones I'm getting from Gore's are hit or miss, but this is good. It's like 16 new. I don't know, that one got some little, look like about blossom in right on it. I don't know if you can see it. But, oh my gosh, this tree is full of fruit for a second year. And last year I got like 10 or 12 off of it. And that was the first year. So, I don't know. We'll see. And this peach tree that won't peach, still won't peach. Maybe the chill hours will make something happen. I'm going to fertilize it and see if that makes something happen. But as of yet, nothing. And it should be peaching by now. I'm giving up on my attempt with lime trees. After I try one more time. But this one not looking good not looking good not looking like it's coming back next time i think i will just put it in a, a container and do it that way i think i may have better chance with a container so garden changes in process i'm gonna give you a sneak peek since you are here and stay till the end of the video you stay to the end of the video and i say thank you if you have not hit that subscribe button subscribe to the channel but garden changes why did that get knocked over but the one on the brick didn't this is my calamondin from seed with a gladiola in the pot but garden changes remember this bed it's out of here we started moving it 
relocations, many of projects. That's why this looks like a disaster right now. Relocations, changes, many of projects, changing it all around. And for those of you who've been with me, good news, I we have been approved to have our fences. So, I am getting a fence. And I am doing a huge yard revamp. Uh, I guess that's here. A huge yard revamp. So, get ready, get ready for many, many changes. And for those of you who stayed to the end, we also have, I also have some good information. Um, if you're local, I'm in Jacksonville, Florida, Zone 9 I found out yesterday, if you see, I was at Liberty Landscape on Main Street. And, you know, you chat with these people, you talk, you have conversations. So what they do is they will do a free landscape design. So if you're stuck, don't know what to do with your yard, they can give you sustainable landscape ideas and plans for you to execute or they will execute. But the design is a favorite word, free 99. So they will schedule an appointment, walk your yard with you, give you a design for free 99. So I am going to personally schedule an appointment, test them on an edible landscape design and We'll see how that turns out. So you get some exciting news, exciting information. If you're new to this, have no idea what to do, when to do it, how to do it. That is a good free resources. And again, um, you can execute it yourself. You'll have it on paper, what to do, where to do it, when to do it, how to do it. And you do it. So just an idea, just a tip from me to you. If you're living in a HOA, want your yard to look as good as the neighbors, but don't have the funding for that. If you want to start an edible landscape, which we all need to be doing, this is a way to get it going. Just tell them what you want, see if they can execute it, change what you don't like, and keep what you do. So, I hope you like this video. <sighs> yes, I'm late starting, but I am still the lazy HOA gardener. So help a sister out and plant a seed, plant a seed, plant a seed. Hit that like button. And I love you to life. Get out there and garden, everybody. Bye-bye.